last time, we were demonstrating the point that a coaxial cable or cable can act as an antenna or resonance structure, as we call it. And we were using a spectral analyzer with tracking generator function. You can, of course, do it using a VMA. But uh, we found we raised some questions um, from the feedback. So today, we're taking this opportunity to explain things in details. Rather than using a spectral analyzer, which looks at the frequency domain, today we're going to use a oscilloscope. So hopefully, by looking at the time domain analysis, you can understand the cable resonance structure better. But before we do that, let's have a quick recap so this is a one meter long coaxial cable. You can um, have an open circuit as this, or you can terminate it using a short or 50 ohm, as we said. So let's have a look at the frequency domain analysis as we demonstrated last time. Right? For a one meter coaxial cable such as this, you can see that the Resonance frequency shown here is 46.6 megahertz. So that's the fundamental frequency. As we explained, that means if you feed 46.6 megahertz signal to this coaxial cable, expecting it resonates, right? Uh, but you can also do that using a third harmonics, which is 137.3 megahertz, or the fifth, 228 megahertz, and you know, seventh and ninth. Uh, go on and on. So that's really what we discussed last time. So moving to today's discussion, let's clear a few confusions uh, what we really mean when we say uh, resonance structure in a, in a transmission line. Okay, now we are connecting the same setup, but this time using a time domain setup. As we can see here, we have a functional generator uh, which has a 240 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, we have a portable battery powered oscilloscope, 300 megahertz bandwidth. So that should be more than enough for this demonstration. It is worth mentioning that this has a 50 ohm source impedance and this has a 50 ohm um, load impedance. Well, we can treat it as 50 ohm input impedance of uh, the oscilloscope. So before we start, doing the test, let's just explain things in detail, okay? We have a signal source, which is capable of generating signals all the way up to 240 megahertz, and we have a 50 ohm source impedance in this case, okay? And we have a one meter, about one meter, maybe 1.1 meter long coaxial cable, but in this case, I draw it in a way that represents a, um, a transmission line, okay? And what we're saying, because from the calculation sheet we did, right, we're saying that at the resonant frequency, right, at the resonant frequency, in this case, it's about 46.6 megahertz, 46.6 megahertz as a resonance frequency of about one meter long coaxial cable, we expect to see some resonance behavior. So what it really means is, if I just draw 46.6 megahertz um, signal, then with a open circuit, again, only with an open circuit uh, configuration, we expect it to see voltage waveform. Remember, this is a voltage waveform, and it will have a shape like this, okay? So here we should have a Vmax and here we should have a V minimum. Okay? Because we actually we are not you we are not monitoring the voltage at this end because this end as you can see here is is really open circuit but rather we are monitoring the voltage at this end. So at the resonance frequency, which is 46.6 megahertz, actually, from this setup, I expected to see a minimum voltage 
whatever uh, measured here. Okay, this is voltage as I mentioned. If you have a means of measuring current, then current is the opposite, meaning that we should have something like this. This is our minimum current, and this will be our maximum current for a signal that is 46.6 megahertz. Okay? To explain things further, let's have a look. Same, exactly the same, same length. So we'll just say this is D equals about 1.1 meter, let's say. 1.1 meter. We say that this is really the fundamental resonance frequency, but we know it is true for a third of harmonics as well. So for a third of harmonics, in this case, it's 137.3 megahertz. What happens is, again, I'm looking at the voltage waveform first. So we expect to see something like this, this, and this. Okay, so that's the third harmonic. With 137 megahertz, we expect to say the same, meaning here we will have Vmax, and here we'll have Vmin. Okay, and same is true for the fifth harmonics. So fifth harmonics will be something like, I don't know, like something like that. Okay, so that's fifth harmonics, and so on, so on. So this is really from the time domain analysis, where you can see, really, from our setup, we, as the fundamental frequency, 46.6, we should expect to see a minimum voltage, okay? And we also know, we also know that if you shift this 46.6 megahertz by a quarter of wavelength, okay, a quarter of wavelength, then it's changing again. What it means is that, so rather than 46.6 megahertz, okay, if I go to the second harmonics, which is represents about, let's do the math, 92 megahertz. So for 92 megahertz, effectively, we should see something like this. Okay, so we'll have a V min here and V max here. That makes sense, right? Because as we said, 46.6 megahertz is the resonance frequency. You shift it by another quarter wavelength, then that means you know double the frequency you have V minimum here, but V max here. So this demonstration really shows you this. So let's let's check if it matches. Uh, okay, so we're gonna supply. So currently, as you can see, we have a feeding frequency of, of about 45, 46 megahertz, okay? So that it is, as we said, because at this point we measure minimum voltage, measure minimum voltage. And let's try, is it, if this is true with 137.3 megahertz, which is effectively the third harmonics of this. So now I'm going to do 137 megahertz, 137 megahertz. You can see it's, it's the same, very small voltage measured at this terminus, right? Measured at this side of the coaxial cable, 137. And we also said that with 92 megahertz, basically we're shifting a quarter wavelength and we should see maximum, okay? So let's try 92 megahertz. So 92 megahertz, boom, voltage increase, right? Voltage increase a lot. And this is where the maximum voltage is measured. We also know, we also know that this, all the discussion we had here is about open circuit condition. What if, if you have a short circuit condition then? If you have a short circuit condition, then again, things changed out of phase. So what you see now, if I short circuit it, then it should be zero or almost zero voltage, right? As the minimum voltage. So let's see if it's true. So now I have the open, uh, sorry, short circuit, right? And I just connect this. So again, voltage reduced to the minimum by shorting it. 
open it, it becomes maximum again. So this is what we tried to say last time, right? And it is true with, uh, again, fifth of the harmonics. So 230 megahertz is about uh, the fifth harmonics. And again, with open circuit, it is minimum voltage we measure at this end. And then again, if you shift a, a 46 megahertz again, then it will become a maximum. So you can see if I supply 190 megahertz, then my voltage increase again. Okay, so that's the discussion we wanted to, to have today, really showing you that it is voltage we're measuring, and we're not really measuring the voltage on this end, but rather on this end, and also understanding this third harmonics, fifth harmonics uh, relationship, and also when you shift by a qu quarter wavelength antenna, you just, the, the phase change, you, the signal changed out of phase. So that's um, the discussion, the first discussion, okay? But then again, all this discussion, again, focusing purely on the differential modes, right? Because again, all the signals are feeding into the co inside the coaxial cable. So whatever the discussion we had is actually a differential mode, and we are measuring voltage. So now let's move to common mode. And for common mode, we are actually going to use a current measurement, okay? For, for current, as we discussed earlier on, right? You have, if again, at 46.6 megahertz for this one meter long length, if we, we saw that the voltage at this end is minimum, but if we have a method of measuring current, then we expect it to see current at its peak, and the current at this end will be minimum, okay? Peak current, minimum current. Let's see from the common mode point of view whether this is true or not. For common mode demonstration, we're using just one single wire, right? Represented a common mode uh, setup, and in order to have a fair comparison with what we discussed previously, the length of this wire is also about 1.1 meter long, or roughly the same as, as, as the um, coaxial cable in previous discussion. And as you can see here now, we are now using current probe. So we're measuring current contents rather than voltage. Although showing in the units here is voltage because I haven't correlated this reading to current. You know, as a representative method, you know what we measure actually represents the amplitude of current rather than voltage. And also it is worth noting that these two current probes has to be matched. So in, in the transfer impedance of the current probes has to be the same for a fair comparison. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just plug this single wire into the center of the output of the tracking or output of the uh, functional generator and again I'm, I'm, I'm supplying a, a frequency right so turns out this cable re resonance about 50 megahertz which is not far off from 46.6 megahertz compared to um, the previous discussion but interesting really as I wanted to show you is whereas previously when we measure voltage we measure minimum voltage at this end now as you can see this is channel 1 Really, we are measuring peak current or maximum current at this end, right? And on the other end of the wire, which is connected to channel 2, representing the current uh, flowing at the tip or end of this wire, so I can even make it like this, you can see that the current level is extremely small, right? Very minimum level at this end. It is also interesting to just to demonstrate the point that uh, we know that this end is high impedance to earth, right? That's why this wire acts as a, a quarter wavelength antenna because one end is high impedance, the other end is relatively low impedance, so it's a quarter wavelength antenna. Um, but I can just touch this, right? The minute I touch this end, you can see already that I provide, my body provides a low impedance to Earth uh, from this end point of view. And you can see that the uh, amplitude of the uh, current measured on this end uh, uh, reduced dramatically, right? The minute I released, it's coming back.